Okay, so here we are to finish up the phaser tutorial, and uh, thanks for getting all the way this far if you've, if you've done all these. And, uh, you know, let's check out where we were in the last one. So in the last one, we added the score. So we saw score up here, and uh, it should be collecting, you know, point or scoring points as you collect stars, right? So what do we got to do next? We got to add some bouncing bombs. So I'm, I'm going to go to section 10 here. And uh, and we're going to add the bombs. So the bombs are going to be a lot like the stars, right? But they're going to act a little bit differently. Okay. So um, so let's let's try it, right? So this first section right here um, creates a group to generate the bombs, and then sets up a collider for the bombs, and then adds a collider for the player and the bombs. Okay, and remember when we add this collider for the player in the bombs, it's going to call a function for us and we'll have to define that function. So let's set this stuff up first. So I'm going to copy these three lines of code right here. And then I'm going to, uh, to go back to my, to my game scene class here. And uh, I'll go under create and maybe um, I'll put it on the, actually maybe I'll put it above here. And say this dot, you know, create bombs, right? Um, they have a hit bomb method, right? So uh, I want to make sure I didn't use a name that they had already used, right? So I'll do a create bombs here, and then I'll scroll to the bottom of the create section and say, you know, create bombs, okay? And, uh, and then I'll paste those three lines that I had copied earlier. And then we'll take a look at these, right? So this says bombs, this dot physics world add group. And we've already done that. So this creates a group of physics objects, right? And we have to, you know, think about the bombs variable and say like, who's going to own this, right? And so we probably want the, um, we want the class to own this, right? Or the instance of the class. So, so we'll say this.bombs, right? So next we're gonna say, hey, you know, physics, add collider, bombs, and platforms. So the bombs will bounce off of platforms, but you know, who owns the bombs? We have to say this.bombs, and who owns the platforms? Well, this does, right? Okay, so next we need to say like, hey, let's add a collider between the bombs and the player. So, you know, who owns the player? You know, this owns the player. And who owns the bombs? This owns the bombs. And then we don't have the hit bomb method, but it will be owned by the class. So I'm going to put this dot hit bombs here, or hit bomb, right? So now we'll have to define this function. And we've got that function here. So I'll copy it. And what we want to do is we want to paste it right here. And I'll take out those extra lines there. There we go. That looks pretty good. But we're going to rewrite it as a class method. So we'll get rid of the function keyword. And, uh, and then these two properties right here, again, are parameters that are passed into the function. So we don't have to say this in front of player. So remember, you know, when you have a collider and there's a handler for that collider, right? And the same thing with the overlap. Um, it returns to you like like it automatically loops through all of the all of the player objects and all the bomb objects. So if this was a group, it would go through everybody. If it's not a group, it just uses the one object. This is a group though, so it 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 checks the player against every object here. And when the player hits one of these objects, then it calls this method and it passes in the player and whichever one of the bombs the player ran into. And so we get those as local variables that belong to this method. So these two variables here um, are local to this function. So they, they're only good within these curly braces, right? Okay. So now, uh, you know, if we, if a player hits a bomb, we're going to say physics pause, and that will stop the physics engine and all the objects will sort of freeze on the screen. We'll tint the player red so this is red because this is FF, that's red, zero, no green and no blue, right? And then we'll say animations player turn and it'll call the turn animation and that's what um, makes the player face forward, right? So, so the player will turn red and it'll face forward to you. And then we'll set this game over property to true. And when we look at this, we have to ask ourselves, 
who owns this variable, right? So I'm going to say this dot game over is true, right? So, you know, if we have this game over variable and we set it to true when a player hits a bomb, before the player hits the bomb, what's the value of game over? Well, if we haven't set it, it's undefined, and that's not good for our game. So if it's going to be true now, it should have been false when the game began, right? So this is a case where we want to take this variable and scroll to our up to our constructor function. And here is where we want to initialize variables that our, our, our object is using, right? So game should probably be, game over should probably be false right when the game begins or when the game is created okay so i'm going to put that up here and then now you know it'll be false when the game begins and when a player hits the bomb game over will be true okay so we got that work in um oops let's see here what else do we need so uh so now when we get into collect star we're going to have to do a little more work right so when you've collected all the stars we're going to generate another bomb right and so far in collect stars we have all of this code here down to score text but now there's this extra bit here so let's kind of grab this and we can copy that little block and then we'll find collect star here which is getting pretty long so we might even consider you know breaking this into a a a another sub function right but anyway let's format the text a little bit so um so let's go through it and uh, i'm going to clean mine up a little bit here so it's a little easier to read and uh, yeah there we go right so i think that looks pretty good Okay, so let's read through this now. Uh, maybe I'll put a line there, right? Okay, so this is from here to here is the new code. Okay, so what's going on here, right? So we got um, stars, so who owns the stars? Well, we gotta make sure we say this dot stars, right? And we're gonna say, hey, count active, right? So if the count is greater than, than zero, then there's some active stars, right? If the stars are not active, we're gonna iterate through the stars again and call this function and pass it'll pass like when we call this for each child object it'll pass that child in here so essentially we're looping over all the stars okay and we're going to make them all active again because when you pick them up they become inactive right because we disable them okay so we're going to reactivate them and then we're going to set the x property i'm not quite sure what's going on with that oh yeah i'm not sure what they're doing here so this is like body is true child x yeah i don't know what that is right so I have to go, I gotta go look up enable body, okay? But anyway, this is gonna reactivate the star and we'll, we'll take the tutorial's word for it that that works, right? I, I did this tutorial and it works fine, right? So um, so we're gonna re-enable the body, right? I'm gonna change this over to an ES6 style function because I kind of like those. So I'll just switch it like that. I'll remove function and I'll put the arrow in, okay? So if the count of active stars is zero, all the stars have been collected by the player, We'll reset all the stars. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to um, look at the player X, right? So if this is the player, we gotta say this dot player, right? And then we've got phaser math between, right? And um, then we're gonna, oh, that's a var X right there. Why don't, we're probably not gonna change this. It's probably okay as a const, right? And then we're gonna get a bomb. I'm gonna say const bomb equal bombs create another bomb so essentially here um, it's going to call bombs and then it's going to create one more bomb in the bombs group so the game starts off with one bomb and when you clear all the stars it adds a second bomb okay and it's going to create it at x and 16 so essentially it's going to you know generate an x value here and use that for the for the you know um position of the next bomb. It kind of uses the player's position and, and a random number to, to calculate where the bomb is going to go. Okay. And we'll set the bounce to one. So here's a note on the bounciness, right? If bounciness is one, it'll bounce forever. Like it'll never lose any energy. So if we set this to like, you know, uh, 
0.5, it would lose 50% of its energy on every bounce in it and eventually come to a stop. But if we set the bounce to one, it'll always bounce back with exactly as much energy as it had when it when it started, right? Okay, we're going to make the new bomb collide with the world and we're going to set the velocity of the bomb to a random value so our bomb kind of bounces in a random direction, okay? And uh, I think that's pretty good. So now remember, in this case, x and bomb are two local variables in this block right here, so we don't have to put this in front of them. Okay, um, let's give that a try and see how that's working. Maybe I, I missed something here. Yeah, I think that's everything, right? All the way down to the conclusion. So let's go give it a test here and see if I have any errors, right? Um, so I'll collect a star. I'll collect another star. I'll jump up here, collect these stars. Let's see if I can get the ones on this platform. Oh man, my, my bomb is not going. Maybe I missed something. Let's check it, right? Um, let's check for an error. I think we should have had one bomb at the beginning. Oh, I got an error, right? So no wonder I don't have a bomb, right? Um, can't find variable star. So that's on line 105. Let's take a quick look here. Uh, line 105. Um, oh yeah, because I said stars, right? But I forgot to put this in front of it. So I got to say like who owns the stars, okay? So that looks pretty good. Let's give it one more try and see if we can get, oh, no error that time maybe, right? Let's see. So I got to collect some stars here. Let's collect all these guys. I think if you get right to the end, you can jump across to this platform. Oh man, my bombs are still not showing up. Stars are showing up. Let's check for another error, right? Um, oh, I got another error, right? Oh, can't find variable bombs, right? So, um, oh yeah, because I got bomb is a local variable, but bombs was the variable that we created up in uh, create bombs, right? So it's this dot bombs. So let's fix that. This dot bombs, and I will give it one more try. Let's see, so I'll collect these stars here. And let's see, there we go, right? Oh, there's a bomb, right? So I gotta not get hit by the bomb. Uh, actually, I'll just go get hit by a bomb so we can see that, oh, there it's working, right? So you can see the character turns red and then it turns to face you, right? And if you, I'm gonna restart it and uh, and uh, let's uh, let's collect all the stars twice, right? So so if I collect all these guys and uh, this guy right here and this one and let's see here. Oh yeah, let's get these guys right here. Oh, so now it adds a second bomb, right? So you can see there's one and then two bombs, right? And that's where the game gets kind of tougher, right? So that kind of makes it like more challenging, right? So anyway, so if you made it this far, you completed the whole tutorial. Maybe we'll do a couple more videos on how to modify the tutorial and add some features to it. But this is pretty much the whole thing right there. And then you can play the game. It's pretty good. Why don't you post your high score in the comments, okay? So anyway, thanks for watching and thanks for making it all the way to the end of the tutorial.